So this is an image captured in Poland, and that's the Tatras in the background, and that's Guy Wont there. So the first thing I'm going to do with this edit is I am going to go into Adaptive Color. And that's going to warm the image up, and you can see more details appeared here in the sky. The next thing for me is the crop. Now, I when I took this, I imagined it as a 65 by 24, but once I edited it, I began to think a 2 by one would be better. So we are going to go into the crop and I've got 2 by one set up in here and you can see that that allows for a nice balance of the image. I'm not worried about the cables in this at all. That tree there is the only thing that bothers me slightly. So I'm going to take that in just ever so slightly Anything I want, I can remove later. Perhaps bring that across to there, just to balance out the image. And bring in some more of the sky. That's a nicer feel to the image. So I'm now going to balance the image out. So I'm going to bring the exposure down slightly. Bring the highlights down slightly, because we're going to play with them later. Lift the shadows slightly. Whites are okay where they are. Nope. Take them back. Again, for me, for these style of images, I like to add a tiny bit of texture and a tiny bit of clarity. Vibrance I'm going to lift slightly and I'm going to bring the saturation back again because of what I'm going to do later with the image. Now, the temperature of the image is 5,200. I want to warm this up because I want to affect the greens and yellows in here. So I'm going to warm that up just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to get into selective color and play around with the greens. So I'll now go down into the color mixer. And I'm going to take a point sample for this. And I am going to go just about there and then I'm going to move that over to the warmer tones just to around about there that looks okay for now if I need to move it later I can go back in and move it I'm also going to brighten it up just slightly that's perhaps too much I'll bring that back so it's just small edits we're doing for this at the moment Greens in the trees, everything else there looks okay for this. I'm going to work with the sky and everything else within this image, again within the masks. So quite happy with everything else that's in there. I'm going to jump straight into the masks. Now that we're in the masks, I'm going to select the landscape to see how a white room reads this image. So we have the obviousness of the sky, it picks that up perfectly. Let's see about the architecture. Yes, although it's selected both here, if I want to edit one individually, I can go in and subtract from the mask. Let's see how it reads the vegetation. Again, with the mountains, I can remove some of that as well. So I'm going to work with all three masks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the sky first and show the overlay, and it is affecting some of the mountains, but we'll see how it deals with it with the edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create a tiny bit more drama in that sky. That I'm quite happy with. I'm going to push the contrast again, and I'm reading the entire sky as I'm doing this because of what I'm going to do over here later with the light. Highlights I'm going to bring back slightly. Shadows, just a touch minus one, Whites I'm not going to touch, blacks I am going to touch at the moment just to see what it does and it's creating a slight mood in there and it's only at minus one. Temperature I'm going to play with just to see what it does to the blues, I go too far. So we're going to take it back to about minus nine because again I'm going to balance the image with a warmer tone over here. For me, texture tiny bit. We don't want to overpower the sky here. But we're just going to take a slight, just about there. Perhaps about there, then the clarity. Because I want the texture in these clouds. And again, I'm going to probably remove some of these once we move on. So, quite happy with how the sky is looking just now. 
will then move into the vegetation. And first of all, with the vegetation, I'm going to add a tiny bit of texture. You'll notice I do this in a lot of my images, but it depends on this type of image that I'm, I have been taking. So that again for me is okay. Now we will go up and balance some of this. So I'm going to add a touch of contrast in there. Highlights, I want to push them, but again, it's going to be just a touch. Shadows, I'm going to pull back slightly. Uh, whites, I'm going to leave. Temperature, I'm going to warm up slightly. Again, I can adjust this later. So, so far, it's looking okay. If I show you the before and after, we started with this and already we have this. The next thing is a linear gradient over here. I want to add slight more depth into these clouds again because of what I'm planning here. So I'm going to take the exposure down very slightly in this. Just about there. So it's minus 25. I'm going to push the contrast to see it just in case it overpowers with blues because when you add contrast the saturation boosts slightly as well. That may work. I may have to go back and change that one. I can pull the highlights back if I want. And I'm going to pull them back quite a bit because it's then creating a slight vignette with the clouds, shall we say. Shadows. Again, pull it back in, but I am being careful that I don't suddenly clip out a corner. We have a nice histogram here, so I've got latitude either way. That I'm going to leave. Now, the remainder of this edit relies on what we do here. So I've got a couple of things to do with the trees themselves and the grass. So again, this is a mask. And this time it's a colour range. And what I'm going to do with this colour range is choose there. That I am quite happy with. I'm not going to refine it too much. So I'll turn on the overlay just to see how much. I can pull it back. I can pull it right back to here if I want. But I want a warmer tone all over the entire image. So roughly about there. Now the first thing I'm going to do is dial in the temperature slightly. And again, this is all based on what we are going to do here. Uh, contrast will help add a tiny bit of saturation to it as well. Yep, I'm quite happy just at six. Highlights, what will happen is if we push them, that may be too much. But again, we'll leave it at that. So that's us again. A couple of quick edits. And we have changed the image from there to there. So you can see we've got slightly more drama in the sky. The trees are beginning to pop now. We've got the warmer tones. It was a sunset. And we've got the warmer tones. So this that we're going to do next should set off the entire image. So the next part of this edit is taking the image into Photoshop. Just to finish off what we are going to do with this. So I'll make it fit the screen. Right click. Edit in Adobe Photoshop. In this case it's 2025. So now we are in Photoshop. I'm going to make a copy of this layer. Command or Control and J. And we're going to work in this copy. And what I'm going to do with this, I have a few plugins. In this case, the Pro Panel, I use a lot for landscape editing. I use an awful lot for it. So I'm going to get into the filters and I'm going to add the Orton effect. And that will help intensify the glow and the setting sun as well. So the default settings are normally what I work with. So a radius of 60, okay. And I'm not going to, for this image here, I am not going to adjust the levels. And there we have the Orton effect. Now, if I flick that on and off, you will see quite a difference in this image. But you'll notice it's affecting the buildings as well. So we have the option of inverting the mask in here. And then painting in the areas. Or simply, and it's down quite low, we don't want to overemphasize it. 
take it back just slightly and that way it's retaining the detail but the glow is still there as you can see and it adds a tiny bit more contrast in here as well so the next thing that I am going to add to this is within the pro panel and it's a flare and if I do that you see the flare appears here and of course, I am going to put the flare over there. Now, this is created via a group, hue saturation layer, and the flare itself. So we can adjust any elements within here. What I am simply going to do is I can move that around, and you can see it's got a nice warm glow to it. And I'm going to adjust the size of it. So first of all, I'm going to do that just make it slightly bigger we will be moving it then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag it out just to elongate it slightly as well and then perhaps make it a bit bigger and then I'm going to take it off to around about there and then just tweak it to where I want it to be and that way it's overlapping and creating a nice soft edge on these trees as well. I can make it bigger, make it smaller. Pro panel is really, really good if you are thinking about using anything for this because it is quite a lot of different tools, filters, effects that you can use within it. But I'll keep it quite simple just now and just use these ones. So we have that. Let's just click that, OK. Let's have a look at that full screen. Just to see what we think. It looks OK, it looks slightly unnatural, but it helps the feel and mood of this image. So let's zoom back out again. Let's just move that over. Again, I can adjust the opacity of this. Just take it down to where I want it. And I want the colour to stay in. So I see about there. Let's move it. Perhaps we'll take it down a bit so that it's getting more effect in these trees. Expand it up. And bring it out there slightly. And now I could overemphasize this and take it right out to there if I wanted. Just about there. Click OK. What I'm going to do before I send this back to Lightroom to finalise the edit is I am going to go Layer, Flatten Image. So everything's compressed in there, so I need to be happy with it before I do that. And then go File, Save. And you can see it's saving down here. So I'm going to get into the Comparison view. So that's the image we started with and that's the image we have now you can see it's just a subtle effects but it changes it quite dramatically i'll just press c again and come back to this image a couple of more edits to do and then we are done i'm going to get into the develop module back into the masks i'm going to add a slight linear gradient in here very very slight with this one and I'll just check to show the overlay so that you can see where it's going to affect. And I'm going to pull down the shadows slightly. And if I pull them back quite a bit, you can see it is just a subtle edit, but it's subtle enough to make a difference. Let's turn that off. And just to turn the mask on and off. And hopefully you will see just the subtle difference with this. In here, I'm going to select that object. And although we've added an autumn effect to everything, I'm going to adjust that and perhaps the house slightly. So create new mask, select objects, and I'm going to select the objects via the rectangle marquee tool. Select that object and we have it. Yes. I'm not so worried about this because it's in shadow. I'm going to adjust the texture slightly adjust the clarity slightly the next one is the house in the background again select objects i'll we'll just draw over the house check that it's selected the house yep and we're only going to work with that one again go in texture out there clarity maybe no 
what is just as much to about there. And let's press F in the keyboard. Zoom it out slightly. I'm going to add one final mask in here. And then that's us done. In here, new mask, radial gradient. Just in there, drag it off. I'm going to rotate it just ever so slightly. I'm going to adjust just to about there. Which means I'm now, because of that, I really like that effect, but it means now, and this is the evolving image as we edit it, I'm going to add a second one in there. So I'm quite happy just with that as it is. Let's just add the tiniest warmth to it. Create new mask, again, radial gradient. And if you're wondering why I'm using a radial gradient instead of a selective colour, it's simply because I like the drop-off that this gives when we are doing this. So I'm going to adjust the exposure slightly, and this one can't be too much at all. Just about there. That's actually really nice. I'm going to subtract a couple of things from it. First one being primarily the hut. So I'm going to get into the mask, subtract, using a select object. I'm going to select it. And if we watch just up here, you'll notice it's taking it out. I'm also going to subtract that tree. It might be negligible and not affect it too much, but it's all, always worth trying. Select objects. Let's just draw around the tree to see if it selects the tree. And it did. So that gave us a nice contrast between the light and the dark areas. And I think we will call this image done. Hopefully you got something from that edit working in both Lightroom and Photoshop. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.